All right. Why don't we call the January 18th, 2022 Port Authority Board meeting to order. And with that, let's uh, do the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. Please. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ashley, if you do the roll call for us, please. Chairman Carl Roth. Present. Member Ron Padova. Here. Member Chris Leeds. Present. Okay. If uh, first order is just take a look at last year's minutes, and uh, if there's, uh, I have a couple of things I noted more for intelligibility on uh, page four. Uh, agenda item one, uh, there's a fourth line down, Chief Robinson is the police personnel, is Chief Robinson is that police personnel receive their marine training uh, period, uh, and I think what's left off there is like from marine qualified law enforcement. Okay. So it's just missing in action there, it doesn't make any sense otherwise. And then the second piece I had was on page five, uh, second line down, uh, coastal restoration expands too much, T-O-O -O should be T-O. So uh, I just had those two things. Anybody else see anything or no. uh, can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve the minutes. I just second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. With those corrections. All right, uh, what they asked, uh, the council's asked is for us to uh, consider a uh, new chairperson, if we're so inclined. Uh, generally, we haven't made changes unless there's a, if there's a change of uh, place, but I'm open if we wanted to do something differently, like a rotating thing <laughs> or something. <Yeah. laughs> so, I'm very uh, happy with you. Uh, yeah. okay. yes. Don't rock the boat. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. So if we'd like to, can I have a motion to? I, I, I make motion that we uh, extend Carl's term as chairman for another year. I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. All vote, any votes? No. <laughs> all right, uh, moving on to uh, just uh, general items. Uh, we haven't uh, met since last year. We was more of just waiting to see what was going on. Uh, we met with uh, the city manager last year to give him an overview of what we worked on so much in 2020. And uh, so it's been kind of quiet since we haven't heard anything with all the other stuff going on. So the thought was, well, let's just kind of reconstitute. We're supposed to meet at least once a year anyway. Um, and uh, kind of ask ourselves, what do we want to do what's important from our standpoint? How do we want to roll forward? I just brought some of the things that we had talked about for discussion points or at least topical areas. Um, the only thing I'd like to kind of reiterate here because I think depending on where we go forward, um, just as far as our, what we're empowered to do, um, it shall be under the Port Authority section that charter it's in the, your packet but it's our duty and responsibility to assure regulatory compliance environmental compliance and safe waterways so that just kind of refreshes in my pea brain what the heck we're doing here and if anybody comes in you know the kind of things that we focus on so uh, with that in mind uh, I think the things that we have on our list are encompassing there but I just opened up, is there anything else that you guys can think of that we'd want to at least chat about tonight and see if it has legs and we want to carry it forward? The only thing I'm interested in dock regulations and permitting processes. Okay. Anything specific on that? Uh, basically, uh, if we're going to talk about it, um, Mostly about how um, the process, not so much the process, because the process is 
permitting through the city is through Army Corps of Engineering. You go there first, you get your permit, and then apply to the city. So the city doesn't necessarily permit it. Army Corps of Engineering does. The city's supposed to adhere to the permit. And that's where I think we're having issues. Okay, so that's the part that I would like to discuss is the lack of um, adhering to the permit on the city's part. Okay, um, there have been complaints to me uh, from citizens that have, uh, where docks have been permitted through Army Corps, uh, the application went to Army Corps, the information is, that's supposed to be supplied to Army Corps, it says, is accurate. And it says on there, if inaccurate um, information is submitted, it, the permit is null and void. Okay? So for instance, if you're going to put a dock in a canal, and you say the canal is 90 feet wide, and it turns out it's 75, then the permit is null and void. False information. We're having an issue where the permits are going to Army Corps of Engineering with false information, okay? Uh, Army Corps doesn't come out and inspect. They issue the permit. The city's job then is to follow through with the permit that is issued. If it says it's 90 feet and they measure it, it comes out to be 75, they should stop the project, okay? Right. They don't. If it says you're allowed to put in, the permit says six poles, and they put in eight, they don't. And that's the issue we're having because it affects everybody in the canals and all the neighbors. So it's on the city's end, it's not on Army Corps' end. So my, my point is how do we get the city to adhere to the regulations of the applications through Army Corps, and if the information submitted is wrong, the permit is null and void. They need to say that before the project is started. That's my issue. Should we just jump into this now? Yeah. I have no issue on order, so. I, uh, I think that makes sense Chris, to discuss it uh, as we go. Thoughts? Well, it, I guess the first question is who at the city is responsible? Is that building inspection, right? Is that code enforcement? Who's responsible for doing that? Do we know? I would assume code enforcement, but I right. do not know. Right. Do, you, do you know? I mean... I have no because I know there's been a change. We, I don't know if we are now hiring that position out. And does it fall under building inspection or code enforcement? I don't know. But whoever is in charge of it through the city is not following regulation, and it causes a lot of problems within the city. Pits neighbors against neighbors, and there's just no use in having a permitting process if no one's going to look at the permit that was issued and follow through. Is it the same process for a, a seawall enhancement as well, or is that not go through our recording? Uh, I, I think a seawall would go through Army Corps, but if it's replaced, there's already one there. Right, right, right. So it's a, it, it affects, it's a different effect on the neighbors and the situation. Right. In this case, so specifically it was a canal, okay? Yeah, yeah. And the problem is, is that they started the project and they didn't follow the information was wrong to Army Corps, and the whoever put the pilings in did not follow what was on the permit, put them out too far, put too many in, right. and then all the neighbors are complaining because obviously it blocks the canal, right. and they supposedly complained to the city about it when it started, and nothing was done, and now you have a project that is half finished, holes are in, wrong spots, um, where does it go from here? Right. Right. So I made some queries to DEP because I think, um, and I also, in dealing with 
another dot piling issue. Uh, talked with uh, some folks that are in the construction business to kind of understand. And their comments were that, you know, down in Pinellas County, it's a lot more straightforward. There's more guidelines as far as what you can do, what you can't do, versus in this city or Pasco County, not so much. So I was like, okay, I'll take that piece. So I reached out to DEP to kind of find out more about this process. And I think to where you're going, Roddy, is that I don't know if anybody really knows how this is supposed to work. Because generally, my understanding was that if you issued a permit, you had enforcement regula regulatory authority over that. Right. And somebody else didn't. And there was this, at least in the government arena, I'll stay away from your stuff, you stay away from my stuff. But I don't know. All right. But what I found out talking to EP, she was supposed to send me a bunch of stuff that I was going to share with you. But if we elect to go forward on this, when that stuff comes in, I'll shoot it your way. Um, but with the state, there's all kinds of nuances because it's not even clear who owns the land. If they don't know who owns the land, they may or may not deal with it at all. And they'll make that determination. Is the core involved? Does the state have full authority? What is it? And then where the city comes into play on it, is it an overlay? Do they look at it differently? Because what, what begged the question to me was, in our city uh, regs, we say we can't build a dock out more than one third of the way. Right. Right? State is 25% of the way. All right? So what governs here? And the state's priorities are, you know, navigation, flexibility in navigation, so you don't restrict tight waterways like canals and that type of stuff. So then I started going back, and I said, well, you know, our regs are 45 years old. A lot of changes. Things have happened. Is this something that really needs to be looked at and then figured out how all these pieces go together? Does it start at the city? Does it start at the core? Does it start at the deep? Florida, state of Florida, does it depend on, you know, what day of the week it is where you start? I don't know. But nobody seems to have a clear view of what it should be. And then you bring in the co contractors. Right. Oh, I bet. You know, and you got some that maybe are a little shady, okay? Yeah, we're a licensed contractor, but what does that mean? Right. Okay? So there's all of these things out here. I don't think it's a pretty picture, but if you think we want to go and kind of pull back the onion on this and kind of maybe make some rhyme or reason and get some recommendations, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, I, I think there needs to be some kind of protocol because if the city is going to back off and say, Army Corps issues the permit, we just go out and enforce it or inspect it, and that's the way they want to do it, that's fine if that's the way they're going to do it, but at the same time, the permit reads, if the information, whoever submitted the permit, is false, the permit is null and void. Right. So if you go out there and you see that this is what the permit reads, and then you look and you measure across the canal, and it's not even the same width, the permit's no good. There is no permit from the city, shut down, go do it over again. So the city has to decide where are they going to enforce from DEP after they, or Army Corps after they issue the permit, or do they want to get into the actual, where's the diagram, right, right. measure the canal, we're going to measure it, what do they want to do? Uh, right now, we don't know. So I think, uh, as a, as a board, if we came up with some kind of guidelines and presented it to them, then maybe it would help them. So why don't we do this, is that let's just take this puppy on. Um, we could probably talk about it more this evening, but I don't have a whole lot of facts. I just did some light due diligence. But so, it's clear that it's in our purview, and if it's, yes. a, if it's something that's not working, then it's... Right. someplace we can have an impact. So 
clearly we should take that on. So yeah, and I, I think we also need to, before we go ahead, maybe we need to clarify with the city manager through the building department, what direction do they want us to go? Do they want to, is there, is their thought purpose right now is that we don't issue the permits, we just follow what DEP does? Or do we want to actually start getting into looking at the designs, looking at the structures, measuring canals and the length out and all that? Um, because I know, at least for the recent thing I did, which was set three dolphins out, um, the city had a drawing submitted and they went to confirm when they did the ins final inspection that that's where those were. Okay. A little loose, but you know. I, I, but the other part that you said that was interesting was uh, you know with our dredging permits as a sidebar, our dredging permits are incorrect as far as what we're requesting to dredge for 26. So from the city's standpoint, um, apparently that permit would be well and void on what you're saying, right? So, uh, Ashley, you may want to take that back to the city manager. Yes. Um, because 26 is not defined correctly in the everything that's gone to the county. Sure. Yes, okay. Other thoughts around this guy or other discussion? Yeah. Clearly something, have, clearly something we should chase. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think we can avoid a lot of uh, animosity between neighbors. Right. And um, even with the city, if, if there is a procedure that's followed and the city just needs to, uh, if they want to go ahead with just following through with what the permits read, make sure it's the right information and then inspect the process, that's fine, but we need to know which way you're going and then right. administer the process. Well, if we've got an example of one that's not working right now, right, right. then this the is... The city is very is, aware of it too. Right. So, because right. it's just sitting in limbo. Right. And that's what we want to try to avoid in the future. Right. Right. I, in the packets, there's the pure document marine structure piece, but that doesn't go to where Ronnie is describing, right. which is how do we go and manage this? It's really the surround. This may be okay or maybe incomplete, but it's the surround part that I think you really hit the nail on the head with. Mm -hmm. right. so. Okay. Um, anything else around that subject other than we will put that up. We'll do an outreach to the, the city manager um, first. Just do a, a, I'll elect to send a note to him, CC gents on that, on uh, this is what we see, get his guidance on how to go forward on it. Uh, but this is a topic we think is important. Sounds great. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, how about jumping back to two, our, uh, our Big effort. Chris had, uh, uh, did a response to the council. I guess that was in the fall. It was in November. Yes. November. And uh, we, I have not seen anything. I did that. not receive a response. Okay. Okay. So I think this is still an important issue, um, mostly from the standpoint that uh, as of October first of 21, uh, any new construction, flood insurance falls under the new rates. Right. And then in April of this year, we all get the pleasure of the new rates. And uh, I know in the city's newsletter, they talked about the 15% discount that we received for flood insurance. However, that's uh, way below average for the uh, for the state, so uh, it's like getting a C on your report card. It's not a it's not a good grade. Yeah. Well, it depends on where you go. It's like sixty percent <laughs> of a hundred. So right, yeah. is that a C or where is that? 
Okay. Uh, it's a participation. It was a participation. Right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, if for no other reason, I believe this is really important because it touches so many people. Right. And I'm concerned that in the second quarter of this year, we're going to be seeing people are going to be saying a lot more about it. Um, so, I just wanted to at least put that on the table and see what your guys' thoughts were about this as it sits right now. I, I agree. I still think it's important. I still think it's the right course of action to pursue. Um, we do need the city support to, to do that. I, I don't, you know, I don't know how to go about getting that. Yep. Um, yeah, any, any thoughts? We gave the whole presentation. I mean, I don't know where they stand right now. Are they still looking to dredge the, the canal in front of the Hooters and the waterfront okay. park? Is, are they still going forward with that? I don't know. I don't know. But that was the only thing I heard that they were pushing to do with the BP money, from what I understood. Right. Um, they heard the whole presentation about what we had presented to them, the Crystal River basic project, which right. was on the TV the other last few yeah. days about yeah. it, and the right. Manatee's health and everything up there. Um, I don't know. My thought is, is that we stand by on, on that because for all the effort that was going into it and all the things that were talked about, um, I don't think we can talk anymore about it. I think it's purely if the city's ready, ready to do something with it, then we can. Um, can, can, can. Would it make sense to just say we still believe this is the right course of action? Um, would, would like the city to, you know, to the council to weigh in on this? And, Maybe and take it up again and do right. a vote or right. discussion. Do we want to um, kind of save this to the end, but jump in now? Um, do we want to go in front of council and say, uh, you know, we've met again, we're considering these items to kind of address going forward. We still think these are important uh, that we've talked to you about and we wanted to get any other input direction from the council. Is that something that we want to consider doing or um, do we have to come in front of council or we just send them a letter? It's the same, uh, I think there's one different council person now. Right. Okay. Well, let's, let's do a letter first. Do a letter first? And okay. get it on the record, and then right. go before council. Okay, so if I'm, let me just make sure I've got a square my pea brain. Uh, one, we've got a letter going to the city manager concerning the um, code for Permitting and permit permit all that, right? right? Two, we've got a second one going to the council and probably the city manager as well right. uh, to say, you know, this is still important. Or do you, are there other things that you would want to discuss as well? But more of an open invite. We'd be happy to come before council if you'd like to discuss it further. But we leave this more as an open entree for their benefit. Make sense? Yep. Yes. Okay. All right. All right, um, waterway safety and enforcement. <laughs> we also, you know, extremely important. Um, that problem hasn't gotten any better. Um, you know, I don't know if we have more officers trained. I do know that when you're on the water, you just don't see law enforcement really at all. Mm -hmm. um, and the boat traffic is, even in colder weather and on bad days, the, the behavior and the uh, overall safety levels are not not good at all. Right. Um, I get passed on plane in the channel in front of Sand Pebble all the time. Right. I mean, like the boat's doing 20 or 25 miles an hour, just sit past you and nobody. We, we don't, as a city, care about it. And it's a bad look yeah. and it's not safe. Not to mention what it does to people in the river with huge wakes slamming into your dock all the time. Yeah, um, yeah I, um, 
I mean, it's part of the overall recommendation, right? But more to, more specifically, you know, where where do we stand from a an enforcement standpoint for just you know things like no wake and how many people are supposed to be on a boat? Just basic safety issues. Oh, yeah. oh, life jackets. <laughs> I, I know last year the outreach we did to law enforcement, given COVID and stuff, everybody was kind of right. standing back, you know, as far as getting training, getting people out there, any of those things. So I know um, at, at nighttime it's been particularly egregious. I mean, I don't even know what the things are um, going up and down the river. Um, I think the, the tongue-in-cheek piece, sort of, but not really, because I came back to part of the reason why I, um, wherever it went, as far as the, our duties under the council, as far as enforcing regulation, uh, enforcement. Right. Um, I would say, we can't use the word militia, but maybe we set up a uh, neighborhood watch with enforcement. <laughs> right. <laughs> because if you, if you look at our, our uh, charge, you could interpret it that, well, maybe we're authorized to establish right. something right. like that. Um, and certainly, you know, there's some gung-ho types that may be so inclined. But that was more tongue-in-cheek. Agreed. Um, yeah. But it is frustrating, uh, to, to say the least. But I do have a question, because I think a little bit offline. PW's personal watercraft, um, my understanding is, is that they can only operate up to 30 minutes after sundown. No, it's prior to sunset. It's prior to. 30 minutes prior to. Well, that's irrational, but I don't think the code says that. Does it? Oh, yeah. Oh, it does. Okay. Because yeah. I couldn't rationalize that. <laughs> because they go out at dark and come in at dark. So, yeah. Uh, but it's in the river, way. it's really. And um, it does not matter if you've got lights on one or not. Because we had, we owned one and right. looked into it because we wanted to take it out and watch sunset and, and just trying to figure out exactly what you could and couldn't do. And you couldn't be out there at sunset. Okay. Lights or not. All right. So, if they're coming up the river slow or fast, doesn't make any difference. Right. But the nighttime is probably been the biggest concern I see. I kind of write off during the day because nobody seems to worry about it. But nighttime, I mean, there's some fast movers going through, and then there's some kayaks that are slipping through. Right. Well, and kayaks with no lights. Right. And that's the danger when you have boats flying down at night wide open. Right. And uh, jet skis flying up in the river wide open is the danger to kayaks that you wouldn't think any of the paddle boarders would be out at that time of night, but they are. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think it's a matter of time. I mean, we could put th uh, this under the general outreach to the council that we still think this is important. Absolutely. And action should be taken. And, and unfortunately, it also seems to be like the, the one, the, the easiest to enact, right? It's just a do we want to do this or not. There's not a, there is a funding component to it, but it is something that we very well have in our capability. Now, we may not have enough brain officers to be there regularly, but right. if we have one, we can certainly be out there more than we are. Um, I know years ago, Port Ridge used to shut down the ramps. At 10 o'clock. Okay. Oh, really? Yes. You couldn't launch. I mean, if your boat was out, you couldn't pull it out. Okay. Um, but uh, I don't know if that's going to stop the people who are on the water and how many are going up to right. Main Street. You know? Right. Um, it's just, I guess, the lack of enforcement over the years and years and years in the um, the population of people and boaters you have now, jet skis and every other watercraft out there with no boating courses, no safety courses, right. um, lack of education, 
it's just gotten worse and worse and worse. It's a lack of education and just a lack of presence. I don't see any end to it and unless something changes and we have some enforcement. Um, I hate to see some, it have to come to where someone actually gets hurt right. before the city steps in and yep. does something. You do have a lot of even marine life there. There's a lot of manatees in the river now. We didn't have years right. ago. Much more. Well, what's it going to take? When to yeah. wash up on someone's dock with prop marks? You know. Well, the, the ones in our canal all have prop marks. Right. They're well, getting hit. Yeah. No, one that actually dies. Fresh. And then yeah. What's you know? So I don't know. It's uh, you hate to see that it's going to happen, but if nothing changes. It's just a matter of time where something's right. going to happen on the river. Right. Right. I agree. It's two pronged. I mean, it's education and it's enforcement. Um, I, I do know that we just the, the the education piece you can push. If you're, you know, we were up on, you know, in Homosassa on the river uh, two weeks ago and just sat down by the water for two hours, and we didn't see any of the behavior we see here, and we saw. There's marine saw, patrol. There's saw coast control. guard. Uh, there's local police local up police, and down the river department. all the time. Right. Um, and everybody was obeying the no wake rules and right. you know, and people were doing But you know, there's the right absolutely things. nothing on a river. There right. hasn't been for a long time. They yep. will come out on a in a on a holiday weekend when both right. boating season starts up and they will be out there for maybe the weekend and then you won't see them again until the right. next holiday. Yeah. The part that's probably most blows my mind is, you know, we talk about distracted drivers and cars, but I have literally seen people on boats praying to their phones right. and not looking at anybody if there was a swimmer or a manatee or anything, right. uh, a kayak that's down low, they're not going to see it, they're just going to go right over them. Right. I see a lot of boats towing tubes with kids in it. Yep. Yeah coming out the river or coming in the river, yeah. in the middle of the channel. In the channel, right. 30 yards of line out and the little yeah. kids with life preservers sitting in a tube. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I know. Yeah. Uh, so, it's, it, to, to summarize, we believe this item is also, continues to be important and worth uh, the effort to reemphasize in particular, in the council address, this would be the two top items, if you will. Right. That, uh, so it looks like we're gearing towards three letters? Yeah. Uh, well, you, want, you want to do that under a separate letter? Separate. Or, well, I, and if, I, unless you want to do one letter with all three items on it. Well, we're talking about. I think they're separate. I think they're separate. I think okay. they're separate. You're and, talking and about the coastal estuary yeah. restoration. Yep. Right. You're talking about the dock permitting process. Let's go into just let's go into the city manager. Yes. So okay. I've got that. And then you're talking about the safety of our waterways. Right. So you want to do three for that. That one will goes to council also. Is that the it, thought? It, it does, but I, I I guess I would ask the question and, and maybe there's a a progression to this. Okay. But if we can't get, if we can't get what we need because of resources or willingness or whatever at the city level, do we then go and petition at other agencies and ask for help and say we've got an issue and raise that? I don't want you know I, I I'm hesitant to send a letter and send it broadcast until we try again at our level. But is that an option? If we need to escalate that, I guess, and and you know, and, we, and we've raised the issue before with the sheriff's department, with Coast Guard, and other agencies, but we, we're we're clearly well, not. Well, we've sure. raised it with them, and their comment is they are spread thin. Thin, right? Which so, is which is where we are as but well. But they respond. Yeah. Um, it's our city limits. Right. So where is our patrol? Right. And 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 look, it's a. For me, I know we're resource strapped, right? It's it's labor hours and, and all of those things. But I don't need this delivered to my house by the police department, right? right. Email it to me. 
and, and let's take that time and well we had come up remember reportion right I, I, I enjoy the I enjoy them coming by my house so I, you know I, I'm, I'm happy for the a few a few meetings back when this was started remember we came up with suggestions such as the sign at the ramp of the park right right mm -hmm. right never went forward right. okay um, patrol cars that are not on the water doing their patrol that would glance at the river either coming down the south side of the river along the river observing the boats if they see something head over to the ramp have a discussion with them from your cul-de-sac you can different see different cul-de-sacs yeah. on the north side of the river same thing right and having that conversation when they if they went up to Nick's park right. um, even talking to the people as they launch their boats about the sign that we put there that warns about the no wake and everything. I think we've done this before. We have. I mean, you're basically describing um, kind of the, like we were talking about in the dock permit. It's how it's done right. that needs to right. be cared for. There, and certainly on the enforcement piece, because of these sensitivities, there were some what we perceive as more easy how right. things could be done that probably still exist. Mm -hmm. uh, but bottom line here, we're going to reemphasize these things, draft up something, run it by, make sure we're all in, and then we can send that forward to uh, council and the city manager. Mm -hmm. But those would be the distribution. We would lead with council on the last two, and then on the uh, code piece, we would lead with the city manager and follow with the council. That makes Agreed. sense. Agreed. Yep. Agreed. Uh, and that way we can get that information out. And then if there are any other things that come up that we want to pursue, we can certainly uh, do that. Ronnie? Uh, it had come to my attention since our last meeting, too, that uh, some of the neighbors were contacted about their um, unsafe structures, I see here, as far as their lifts. And we're told that if they did not um, have them fixed within a certain period of time, they were going to get fined. Huh. So I didn't know if that was a new thing that's going on with code enforcement now, is actually inspecting docks and boat lifts. Yeah. I, I was surprised to me that yeah. they got a letter stating that you have so much time to fix that boat lift that had no boat on it. <laughs> um, or you were going to be fine. What was wrong with the lift? Was it? It was on a piece of property that was purchased with no house, no electricity to the lift, and the lift was up in the air but leaning sideways. Mm -hmm. And they so had a certain amount of time to fix it or be, and it was a pretty hefty fine. Mm -hmm. I was surprised that when they mentioned to me, I said, I didn't even know the city was going around inspecting lifts and docks. Because right. if you recall, what about, I don't think you were on, but I think you were on, we were talking about that electric shock drowning. Yes. And the lifts and going around and doing something, but there, the city never really went and got the equipment to go. When it was brought up to us last year at council about the docks. I think we had the city attorney there and was saying, is this where the city wants to go to start going down the canals, inspecting people's docks to see if they have rotten boards or the dock leaning or unsafe condition in inspecting them and then tagging them? Right. And from what we got back at it was no, they don't right. have the resources, and they're not allowed to go marching through your backyard. And so are they going to start hopping on a boat and start going up and down the canal inspecting docks right. with no code enforcement at the time? Right. Yeah. So yeah. I was surprised to hear that this just happened within the last few months right. out of the blue. Right. So Can we make that part of the, the inquiry to the city manager on permitting and code enforcement, it's, all, it's in line with the same idea, right? right? So along, along the line of proactive inspections? Right. Yeah. 
what is their policy? Is that something they're because once you open up that can of worms and do one, well then, right. where, do you, where do you stop? Bunch, there's a bunch Are you going to inspect right. everybody? Is it going to be a routine thing where you're going to do yearly inspections on people's docks and lists now? And right. I don't know where you go with it. Right. But they did on this certain piece of property, that's what they did. Hmm. Interesting. I had not heard of that one yet. Happy to help with the drafting on those two. Well, you need. I'll volunteer to take a cut, and then no pride in authorship. We'll just run it out, and then okay. any changes, adjustments, we'll get the final, and then we can okay. zip the do dot out. That sounds good. Okay. Yep. Uh, anything else? Those for, capture my hot buttons. Okay. I'm good. Good. Okay. okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Well. Oh. Um, okay. Does anyone see a need to schedule another meeting before we hear something back on the letters? No. no. Okay, good. All right. Then do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.